Good morning, church. Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning service. It's really great to be with you. As you'll probably notice, we are in my home again this week. Uh, so it's old school church, really, as we haven't been here since last April and May time when we first were in lockdown. Mark and I preached from here a few times. So welcome to my house and welcome to our Sunday morning service. I hope you are all well. I know it's been a tough week for a lot of you, but we are here today to worship Jesus and to bring glory and honour to his name today. It's a real joy as well to have Zion Christian Centre with us today over in the Philippines. Uh, we welcome you, a really warm welcome to you. I really hope that you're going to get this link and that you can be part of our service today. It's really great to have you with us. My name's Anna and I'm Pastor Mark's wife and I know that you met Pastor Mark on Christmas Eve when he did a link with you then. So welcome, enjoy our service with us. I've got a couple of scriptures that I want to share with you first thing this morning. Uh, like I just said, a lot of us, a lot of you have had a really tough couple of weeks, lots of challenges, lots of things to face. Um, and I just want to say today, let's focus on Jesus today. Let's lift our eyes to him and let's focus on his goodness and his love and his faithfulness to us. And I really pray that today's message brings you some encouragement in these times. I'm going to be sharing a bit of my heart about Mark and mine's vision, the vision that God has given us to go forward into the next season of the River of Life Church. Uh, so I'm sharing my heart today. Mark did his part last week. Um, and it's just some encouragement to us in these times, something to look forward to. So I have two scriptures that I want to share today before we start with us. And um, one of them I've already shared with a couple of you um, already, and it just feels right to share with the whole church. And it's Isaiah 43, verses one to three. Now, as I read this, this is God's word spoken over you today in your situation. This is God's promise to you today as I read it receive it from the Lord but now O Jacob listen to the Lord who created you O Israel the one who formed you says do not be afraid for I have ransomed you I have called you by name you are mine when you go through deep waters I will be with you when you go through rivers of difficulty you will not drown when you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burnt up. The flames will not consume you, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. Amen. And that is God's promise to us today. And the next scripture I'd like to, like to just share with you this morning is from Philippians 4. And I am going to read from verses 4 down to 9. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honourable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you've learnt and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then... The God of peace will be with you. Amen. Just two wonderful scriptures there, just to kind of put things into perspective a bit for us today. That no matter what we go through, God is with us. And he has called us by name. And no matter what we go through, we can be 
in a place of peace and joy because of God. And <clears throat> we know, don't we, that our peace and our joy doesn't come from this world. There's nothing this world really has to offer. It's all temporal, isn't it? Our peace comes from having that relationship with God. It comes from being in the Lord's presence, doesn't it? And fully trusting in Jesus, fully trusting in his word, fully trusting in his ways. Um, and it just comes from surrendering all to him, which maybe should be a daily thing, to daily surrender our lives afresh to him, commit it all to him and trust in his ways. And then we receive the wonderful peace of God. So let's join together and pray. <clears throat> Father God, you are indeed a truly wonderful, awesome God. Father, we thank you for this morning that even though we can't be together physically in the church building, we can still come and meet in your name. Thank you, Father, for the group over in the Philippines watching. Lord, we pray your blessing and your abundance over that church as they start. And Lord, we just pray your blessing and abundance on everybody watching today. Father, we stand firm on your word this morning that no matter what we go through, no matter the difficulties, no matter the pain, you are with us. Your word says you will never leave us or forsake us. And Father, we trust in you today. We trust in you. We trust in your name. We trust in your ways and we trust in your word, Lord God. We know that you are always good. And Father, we just bring our lives to you afresh today. And we lay it all at your feet, at the foot of your cross, Jesus. We surrender all, trusting fully in you, Lord God. Our peace comes from knowing you and being in your presence. And what a joy it is, Lord God, to be in your presence this morning. To know that you are with us. To know that you love us. To know that you care for us. And your protection is all around us. Thank you, Father. You are an awesome God. Thank you that you are faithful through and through. And your mercies are new and fresh every morning. We thank you, Father God. We praise your holy name. Bless our morning together as we bless you, Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> So before I carry on, I have some really sad news to share with you that our dear Brian, Brian Coombs, passed away last Sunday. Uh, bless him. It was a peaceful passing. Uh, he was in hospital, as you all know. And the family just want to thank us for our prayers and our support at this time. And I just ask that you would remember the family in the coming weeks as they mourn and grieve the loss of dear, dear Brian. And we've also had a message today just to remember Jo, who helps lead Zion Christian Centre. Uh, her brother passed away last week. And whilst we don't know you, Jo, we just want you to know that our hearts are with you and that we are praying for you at this time um, as you mourn the loss of your brother. We've had a lot of grief over the last few months with dear Bert and Mandy. We also remember today Helen and Marion and the two children as they've heard that a, a family member, a family friend, sorry, over in South Africa um, lost their life this week. So a really tough time. So Lord, let's just pray now. Let's just pray for these families, Father, that are mourning the loss of loved ones. Father, it's a difficult time, but you are the God of all comfort. So I pray now, Holy Spirit, that you would comfort Jo over in the Philippines and her family. We pray for Brian's family. We pray for Helen's uh, family member over in South Africa. We remember dear Joyce, Tanya and Bob as they mourn the loss of uh, Bert. And Lord, we remember Roy and Jackie, the loss of Mandy. And we remember dear Phil and his family with the loss of his mum. 
Father, you, like I said, you are the God of all comfort. And we just pray now that they would feel and know you and know your comfort at this time. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So let's just do some notices together. Obviously, we don't have much going on this week. Um, bless you all as you stay at home and stay safe. We do know quite a few people now that have had COVID the last couple of weeks that are making recovery. So that's really good. You know, I had a lovely message from a lady from church. Uh, she lives on her own and we spoke over Christmas and just emailed each other a couple of times. And she sent me a wonderful message back. I asked how her Christmas was and was she OK on her own? And she said, we must be content in the fact, Anna, that Jesus is in control. And when the time is right, we will all be together again in our blessed church. And that's it, isn't it? It's being content with where we're at at the moment trusting that Jesus is in control and that one, one day we will be together again soon. Hopefully it won't be too long. Okay, so let's move on to our notices. Obviously we have no coffee shop this week. Uh, coffee shop will be shut. On Wednesday, we've got some teaching from Tim, our wonderful Bible teacher, Tim. It's gonna be an audio recording and Mark will send that out to you on Wednesday. Uh, and that will be available from probably half past seven as usual and then Friday is our Israel prayer night now often that's just an audio but we're gonna do it by zoom this week we had a wonderful zoom prayer meeting on Friday just gone really really good and can I encourage you if you're missing our prayer nights then join us on zoom it's so good um, everybody gets involved and we just have a wonderful fellowship time as well as prayer time. So we're going to do the Israel prayer night by Zoom. Dave Goodall is going to lead that. Wonderful Dave. Uh, so Mark will send out the Zoom link for that on Friday. It's very straightforward. But if you haven't done it before and you'd like us to explain how to how to do that, it's literally a passcode and a password, I think. <laughs> um, then come and join the meeting and uh, it's good just to see each other face to face as well. So that is on Friday. And we have some birthdays next week. We have little Quinn blessing. It's Quinn's birthday on the 11th. I think that's Monday. Quinn is going to be five. It's Holly Fear's birthday on the 13th. Happy birthday to you, Holly, this week. And Bev, it's Beverly Neal's birthday as well. That's on the 14th. And we just hope that all three of you have a really wonderful birthday in the circumstances. Um, we're going to sing the birthday song to you now. Kieran's going to put that in for us, which is really great. You three are such a blessing to our church family. Always know that. Have a good week. And we just pray that this year is a wonderful year for all three of you. Wonderful. Happy birthday to you all again. If I've missed anybody and it's someone's birthday this week, please have a great birthday as well. So let's move on to the preach. It's interesting, actually, because Mark and I were going to do this preach together last week at church, actually at the front of church and preach together, which is definitely a first for us. You don't see that often, do you? Two people preaching at the same time. We thought it was the first Sunday of the year and we could stand up together and share all that God's put on our hearts. It's a, a joint venture that we're in and a joint vision. Uh, but God had other plans, which is absolutely fine. Like Mark said last week, we 
plan our, whilst we make our plans, it's the Lord that determines our steps. And so with church being closed for now, Mark uh, shared last week his, uh, his heart and his vision. And uh, I'm going to share this week. Obviously, it's the same because the Lord's in it all. And actually, Mark and I started talking together about the vision of the church and how we believe God wants to move us forward. It was probably about a year ago now that we started thinking about that. And what we decided to do was seek the Lord on it separately. Um, and then one day in the summer, last summer, we took a day out together and we went and sat by this beautiful lake. It was a really hot day and we were drinking coffee and we both shared individually what we felt the Lord had put on our hearts to uh, for the future of the church and the future vision of the church. And you won't be surprised to hear that probably 80% of what we each shared individually was exactly the same. <laughs> um, now, some of you might be thinking, why are we thinking about this now? Why are we talking about vision and future plans when we can't even put any of it into place at the moment with where, oh, where we're at as a church? Um, well, there's a couple of points here. Firstly, we just want to encourage you in these difficult days you something to pray into, something to look forward to, something to get excited about. But also vision is the ability obviously to see into the future and see the Lord's heart, but it's also the ability to see opportunities within our current circumstances. We know, don't we, that the world is rapidly changing and we need vision to access these changes and take advantage of them and take the church in the right direction in these unprecedented times. We want to do that right, Mark and I. Um, and we want to offer all the support that's needed in these times. And we want to continue being a church that is purpose driven. A church with vision and direction, even though the world seems to have stood still at the moment. Remember what Mark said last week, regardless of restrictions, the church is moving forwards. And our prayer at these times shouldn't be, Lord, bless what we're doing here at the river, but rather, Lord, help us do what you are blessing. Do you see the difference there? We don't want to, we don't want the Lord just to bless everything that we decide to put in place. We want to do and be where the Lord is blessing things. Because whatever God calls us to as a church, he will enable us and he will equip us to do it because he is faithful and he keeps his promises. And so wherever God guides, wherever God guides us, he'll provide. Wherever the Holy Spirit takes us and whatever he asks of us, however that looks, he will provide and make a way. And as a church, I want us to get really excited about that. Now, there's no denying, is there, that it's been a very strange year, hasn't it? It's very strange times that we are living in. Um, and it's been a really strange time for Mark and I to take over as pastors of the church. Uh, that happened the beginning of October, didn't it? And that's been strange for us with all that's going on. Um, there's been so much extra going on that we've had to factor in and think about. Um, yet through it all, God has been so good and so faithful. But through all those hard decisions that we've had to make as leaders, as a group of us, there's one thing that I've just kept saying to Mark over and over, and that is, I just don't want to get it wrong, Mark. Um, I just don't want to get it wrong. I don't want to make a wrong decision. And I feel led to share something with you today that um, the Lord beautifully said to me a couple of weeks ago, because I'm sure I'm not the only person to say to God, God, I just don't want to get it wrong. And maybe this will help somebody battling with the same thing. So it was in a quiet time and I felt a huge responsibility and burden upon my shoulders that I didn't want to make wrong decisions or get anything wrong as new pastors of the church. And God said to me, love never fails, Annie. 
And if you minister out of love, you can never fail. And so first and foremost, I think what I want to say to you today is that our ministry, mine and Mark's ministry, comes to you from that place of love. Um, our preaching comes out of that place of love. Our serving, our support, our care, our pastoral care for you as a church, <clears throat> our advice. Even if we have to take you into the office and have a word with you, that all comes from a place of love. And everything we do here as a church or at the river as a church comes from that place of love. All the vision that we have, the new ideas, the new ministries that may be put in place in the future comes from that place of love. Now, obviously, you're aware that that is scriptural. Um, it comes from 1 Corinthians 13, verse 8. <clears throat> and it's what the Holy Spirit said to me a few weeks ago. Love never fails. So what I want to do is look at the five strap lines again that, <clears throat> that we have for the church going forward. And the strap lines are, we grow warmer through fellowship, we grow deeper through discipleship, we go stronger through worship, we grow broader through ministry, and we grow larger through evangelism. And what I want to look at first is that word grow, it's at the front of every strap line that we have that the Lord has given us. We grow warmer through fellowship. We grow larger through evangelism. And it's there for a reason. It has importance, that word, I believe. See, our hearts, for every one of you, is to see you grow. We want to see you flourish. We want to see you grow in your faith and your maturity. We want to see you grow, living your life according to his word, to the Bible. We want to see you grow in confidence of who God says you are and grow in confidence of you, your calling and see you fulfil that purpose. We want to see you grow through each of these five strap lines that we have got. We want to see you grow through fellowship through discipleship, through worship, ministry and evangelism. Now we see these five facets of growth described in the first church, don't we? And Mark read the scripture last week and it's Acts 2 and I'm going to read it as well today. It's Acts 2 verses 42 to 47. <clears throat> All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshipped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those that were being saved. What we see here is that the first Christian fellowships together they edified each other, which means discipled each other. They worshipped, they ministered, and they evangelised. And look what the Lord did. He added to their number daily. Now, something to note here is that it was God that added to the growth. Uh, that's his part. When the church did their part, and that was fulfilled, the five purposes. And whilst Mark and I aren't about getting bums on seats and adding to our numbers at the river. If we fulfil our part, God will do the rest. And I truly believe that church growth is a natural result of church health. And church health occurs when our message and our vision is biblical, which is what ours is. And before we look at each strapline individually, I just want to remind you of something that I shared 
with you a couple of months ago. Um, and that is that Christianity is not a spectator sport. Um, it's not you guys sat on your seats on a Sunday morning as spectators, watching everything that's going on at the front or watching through your screen as we are at the moment. It's important to remember that we are all participants. We all have a part to play going forward. We're all part of the body of Christ, aren't we? And every one of us has an assignment from God. Every one of us is called by God. And every one of us has something to do with advancing his kingdom here on earth and here in Hartcliffe. And it's also important that we remember what Mark said last week about we are each a living stone, aren't we? Chosen by God and precious to him. And like living stones, you are being built into a spiritual house. So therefore, we all have a part to play in the vision that we believe God has put on our hearts. And I just want you to get excited by that. I don't want you to be nervous about that, but excited about that, that we're moving forward together as a church, as a family, as a body of Christ. So let's look at the first one, and that is growing warmer through fellowship. And that's exactly what fellowship does, doesn't it? It brings, it, it, it brings a warmth between us, doesn't it? And whilst we may not be able to fellowship physically together at the moment, we still have other ways of doing it, don't we? And we're doing that well. We've got telephone and texts and Zoom calls, Zoom prayers. We've got a wonderful prayer network that a lot of you are involved in. Um, and whilst these things will never compare to actually being together, it's the best that we've got for now. And it's hugely important in this season that we fellowship and stay in touch the best we can. So can I really encourage you today to keep reaching out, keep checking in on people, Keep encouraging each other um, in this season. Now, I don't need to explain what fellowship is to any of you. We all know what that is and we all do it so well already. I think as a church, we really do fellowship well together. It's where we do life together, you know, and mine and Mark's heart through and through is to have a church that do life together. Um, it's where we create a family. It's where we support and encourage and provide for each other a place where we love and love each other where we share our burdens where we can offload to each other where we can laugh together cry together and pray together and fellowship helps us grow in our faith it says in hebrews 10 verses 24 and 25 let us think of ways to motivate each other to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day that his, his return is drawing near. And like Mark said last week, we've got lots of thoughts on how we do this going forward when we're allowed, obviously, uh, quiz nights and social events and just sharing meals together and being a family together um, and ex extend, bringing extended family into that. So we get to know uh, people that don't regularly come on a Sunday, but your families, that we get to know them and fellowship with them. We want to look at doing retreat days as well and maybe even a retreat weekend where we can have a substantial amount of time and fellowship together to really grow as a family. That's a, a huge part of Mark and Mai's heart going forward for us. So let's look at the next one, and that is to grow deeper through discipleship. <clears throat> so what does the word discipleship mean exactly? Well, I'm sure a lot of you know this, but before Christians were called Christians, we were called disciples. And a disciple in the time of Jesus was Someone who followed and learnt under a teacher or a rabbi, as they were known back then. And therefore, discipleship was the process that a person went through 
by being trained by the rabbi to become a rabbi or a teacher themselves. Um, and discipleship is so important, so key, because we want people to become committed, fully committed followers of Jesus. And this way of teaching helps new believers to grow deeper in their faith, to grow in maturity and wisdom, and to build their faith upon a firm and strong foundation. And they then in turn can disciple others and lead others to Jesus. <clears throat> and that's the cycle that we want to start creating at church. So we get a new believer come in, part of an alpha course, part of a discipleship course, having one-on-one -on -one with a mature Christian um, and then they take that baton on themselves and start to disciple younger Christians coming in. This is the method that Jesus used, isn't it? And uh, we know that it works. And it's a one on one is a wonderful way that um, a, a new person to faith can walk alongside a mature Christian, a, a daily walk almost. Um, it produces accountability. Um, it helps deepen and grow that new believer's faith. And it's a place where they can ask those difficult questions. You know, there's Sunday mornings isn't the time for that. It isn't right for that. Um, but it's a place where they can come and they can ask that person any questions they like, where they know they can be completely themselves. And it's a safe and secure environment. Um, you know, and there's nothing like one-on-one -on -one. Um, mentoring and discipleship, if you like. And so as soon as things start to get back to normal, uh, we're going to be putting these things into place. And one thing that's great is that we are so blessed as a church to have so many wonderful Christians, so many mature Christians in our family that will be able to help with this. So that's an exciting thing to look forward to. Okay, so the next one is, we grow stronger through worship. And like Mark shared last week, we plan to put in place on a, a Sunday evening, monthly to start with, um, a live worship night, a place where you can just come and soak in his presence. I know that our church is full of worshippers, full of people who love to worship and sing their hearts out. And I, for one, and I know so many of you have struggled with not being able to do that in church and just try and hum as the music is playing. It's really tough. Um, this is why it's so important that we worship at home in this season. Now, like I said earlier, I know that some of you watching this have had the toughest of weeks. And so I feel led <clears throat> this morning to just take a few moments um, to look a bit deeper into this worship, to look at the importance of it, the power that it holds, um, and how indeed it does strengthen us in these times. So I've just come up with a few thoughts on this. Um, and can I really encourage you to do this, to Put your worship on at home and to fill your house with worship music. So firstly, the Bible tells us that God inhabits the praises of his people. That's Psalm 22 verse 3, if you wanted to know. God inhabits the praises of his people. And so when we worship God, in whichever sense, because obviously, like Mark said last week, we know that worship is our lifestyle. It's not just our singing. Worship is our whole lifestyle. And so when we worship God, that's where God lives. Praise invites his presence. It's where God dwells. It's just amazing to think that God, in all his fullness, inhabits and dwells in our praises of him. I just think that's amazing. So remember that, that God inhabits the praises of his people. Secondly, another thought, worship takes our focus off of ourselves and puts it back onto God. 
it's so easy, isn't it, to focus on ourselves, to focus on our busy lives, to focus on all that we've got to get done in, in a day and, um, you know, the list of things that we have to do. But what God desires is that our eyes are set firmly on him because that's where our true hope is found, isn't it, in him. He is worthy of our praise despite what we face day to day, irrelevant of our circumstances. And so when we worship, it just takes our focus off of that, off of the day to day and back onto God, which is where it should be. Thirdly, <clears throat> praise brings us to a place of humility. We remember our dependency on God as we acknowledge our need for him whilst we worship. And we remember that we are nothing without him. Fourthly, praise makes the enemy flee. It pushes back the darkness, doesn't it? The enemy will not stick around if we are worshipping God, who remember it's God who fights our battles for us. So while we worship, the enemy flees and the Lord fights our battle for us. There's a wonderful story in the Old Testament. I'm just going to read it quickly. Um, it's the story of Jehoshaphat, um, where we see that God miraculously defeats the enemy because of the people's obedience to praise him. And if you wanted to know, it's <clears throat> 2 Chronicles verse, uh, chapter 20 and verses 20 to 24 I'm going to read. <clears throat> Early the next morning, the army of Judah went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. On the way, Jehoshaphat stopped and said, Listen to me, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you will be able to stand firm. Believe in his prophets, and you will succeed. After consulting the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendour. This is what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. At the very moment they began to sing and give praise, the Lord caused the armies of Ammon, Moab and Mount Seir to start fighting amongst themselves. The armies of Moab and Ammon turned against their allies from Mount Seir and killed every one of them. After they had destroyed the army of Seir, they began attacking each other. All the more reason to worship in those difficult situations. Be obedient, put your worship on, and God will fight on your behalf. How awesome is that? Okay, fifthly, praise leaves no room for complaining. Now, I don't know about you, but I have to be so careful of this. And Mark and I have got an agreement that we will pull each other up on this because it's so easy to complain and bring negativity into our conversations without even realising it. And even in our prayers, sometimes there can be a complaining spirit. <clears throat> and I can encourage you today that if you're having a day like this, then put your worship music on, focus on him. Our minds and our thoughts are focused then on good things, aren't they? Rather than negative things. Our spirits will be refreshed and renewed and will feel strengthened and at peace. And will be refueled by his joy. Because what do the scriptures say? In his presence, there is fullness of joy. And finally, praise paves the way for God's power to be displayed. You know, miracles happen when we worship and people's lives can be affected and changed forever. I'm sure you have got a testimony of a time when you were worshipping and God brought a breakthrough into your life or something major changed or maybe you, you were healed whilst you were worshipping God. And I just want to remind us of what happened when Paul and Silas were in prison. Do you remember? It's Acts 16 verses 25 and 26. I'm just going to read it to you. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly, 
there was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. Wow. And as a result of that miracle, the jailer and all his family came to know Jesus that very night. Isn't it awesome what God does just when we bring our worship and our praise to him? Worship will strengthen you through the toughest of challenges and through the driest of seasons. And it is so key in our walk with Jesus. So put your worship music on in this season of lockdown. Now, let's look at the next one. We grow broader through ministry. And this is exactly what we want to do. We want to broaden our ministries uh, according to God's plan, obviously. And like Mark said last week, we've been really blessed at the river to have some wonderful Bible teachers amongst us. And we're going to be looking deeper into his word going forward. We're going to have a look at different series. The first one being uh, Romans, the book of Romans. We're going to look into that together as a church. But also, we have a huge desire to see each and every one of you come into all the fullness that God has for you. Um, and like I said earlier, each one of us, every one of you watching here today, has a role to play in moving forward in the church and a ministry or a group to be involved in. And so we want to help equip you into those God-given roles. We want to help you discover what your gifts and your talents are. We're really blessed as well at the river to have wonderful and fruitful ministries already at church. Um, and a few new things that we, well, we've just set up a pre-marriage course, um, a course obviously in place for people that are looking to take that step wonderful material uh, really really good stuff so we've got that in place something else that we want to see is a, an actual marriage course set up for couples already married but just needing that extra bit of support and guidance maybe uh, we also are going to look at getting a freedom course at the river, uh, which is exactly that, exactly what it says on the tin, a course designed to bring freedom to every area of our lives. Obviously, different ministries will evolve as we seek God together. Different groups will be evolved as we seek the Lord and as we're led by the Holy Spirit. And as we spend time together discovering our own passions and gifts and uh, desires that we have and pray into exactly how the Lord wants to broaden our ministries. You see, we can put together all the pl plans and programmes together that we think are good and we can throw lots of big personalities at it that we think might make it work, but it's only God's purposes that will last. It's only God's purposes and plans that will last. And this is why it's so important to all pray into these things together, to seek God and to seek his purposes for his church. Now, I just want to encourage you, if you are sat at home now thinking, oh, I'm not sure this is for me. Oh, I don't know that I have any gifts or any talents to contribute. And I'm not sure if I'd like to get involved in that. I feel really scared at the thought of maybe having to do something. I just want to encourage you. And I just want to remind you of the dream that Mark had a couple of weeks ago. Now, he did share it last week with us. But there might be some of you here today watching that didn't watch last week. Um, and like he said last Sunday, his dream was for the whole church, not just for him. And in his dream... God asked Mark to put some ice skating boots on, which instantly made him wary because Mark can't ice skate. Um, however, he was obedient and he put them on and he very tentatively started to skate, um, but very quickly got the hang of it and very quickly started to really, really enjoy it and get a thrill out of it. 
And Hasmark said last week, he even went backwards and was skating backwards. Um, and he felt a huge surge of joy um, in what he was doing and was very, very capable doing it. And it wasn't until Mark shared the dream with me a couple of days later that God gave him the revelation of actually what that meant. And what God said was, I'm just going to read it so I don't get it wrong. I am going to ask you to do things in the natural that you can't do. But I am going to supernaturally equip you to do it. And this is a word for us as a church, that God is going to supernaturally equip you to do things going forward that in natural sense you can't do. He is going to equip you. He is going to supernaturally give you all that you need to do it going forward that in the natural you can't do. How wonderful is that? Those he calls, he equips. And I just want you to be excited by that. It's not our own strength, is it? It's God's strength. And finally, how we grow larger through evangelism. Now, God has truly blessed us by putting us bang slap in the middle of a wonderful estate or we will be in the middle by the time the new bits get finished built, which is being built at the moment. And you know, the harvest is ripe. But someone once said something to me and it's really stuck with me. And they said, people don't care what you know, Anna, until they know that you care. So people don't care what we know and the wonderful news that we have until they know that we care. And this has really stuck with me. And so for me, evangelism starts by showing love. Remember God's word at the beginning of this preach, love never fails. By showing a real interest into people's lives, giving them our time, showing them that we genuinely care and we want to offer support and advice and practical care that we can, that we can. Um, and then you watch what that will do. That will naturally just open the door for evangelism. Another thing that's key to remember is we cannot expect unbelievers to act like believers until they are believers. And therefore, we just need to accept them and love them just the way they are. We need to love unbelievers as Jesus did. Now, that may be a challenge to some of us. But that is our mandate, to love as Jesus did. Because it's that love that will draw like a powerful magnet into church. It's that love that brings people to Jesus. And it's something that Mark and I are very keen to do, is to get to know the people of Heartcliffe better, to build relationships, to form friendships and to build that trust. And then... We can introduce them to a man that will change their lives forever, Jesus. I feel led to finish with uh, 1 Corinthians 13, which is where the scripture, love never fails, comes from. And I'm going to read verses 1 to 13. And it's entitled, Love is the Greatest. If I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy, noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains, but I didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I had to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it, but if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless, but love will last forever. 
Now our knowledge is partial and incomplete, and even the gift of prophecy reveals only part of the whole picture. But when full understanding comes, these partial things will become useless. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. Now we see things imperfectly as a cloudy mirror, but then we will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know now is partial and incomplete, but then I will know everything completely, just as God knows me completely. Three things will last forever. Faith, hope and love. And the greatest of these is love. I hope today has blessed you and encouraged you. Um, I hope you have a blessed week. Stay safe. Mark and I love you all dearly. We're so thankful for each and every one of you. And we will see you next week. <laughs>